Um, intro. Hey everyone, happy Wednesday and welcome to another day in the arena. This is Poor Mana's Magic. And today we are going to be taking a look at the newly dropped Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth set. Now, whenever a collector set like this comes out, the first thing everybody thinks is, I can't afford the best cards, how am I ever going to have fun with this? I don't want to sink $100, $150, $200 dollars in this just to be able to play the game. Well, lucky you, you do not have to. Today we're going to go over four different decks uh, that we could have some fun with. Now these are alchemy and historic only. Whenever you enter those two queues, you are going to meet some very high powered decks. But usually at the start of a release, there are quite a few good sports out there who are going to be playing a slightly lower power level in order to experiment with some of these new cards. So with no more ado, let's hop into our first deck concerning Hobbits. Now, one of the most fun things about playing a deck like this is you get to have all of the flavor of the movies and the books, however you experienced this particular universe of characters. And we are going to be kind of batching them according to the books and the movies in ways that kind of make sense to me. So in this deck, we have all of the gang. We have Frodo Baggins, Halfling Scout. When Frodo or another legendary creature enters, the ring tempts you. And as long as Frodo is your ring bearer, it must be blocked if able. Now, the ring tempting you is a new mechanic, specific to Lord of the Rings, of course. And when the ring tempts you, you get an emblem named the ring if you don't have one. And there are four different abilities with the ring, which we'll go over uh, in the gameplay. But the first is your ring bearer becomes legendary if it wasn't and can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. Now, this is very good for Frodo, who is a one powered little guy. This means that when he comes down, he can make himself the ring bearer and he can start attacking in. If there aren't any 1-1s one on your opponent's board, he is just going to start pecking away. And if unanswered, can really uh, snowball into a real problem. So we of course have Frodo. We also have Mariadoc Brandybuck, a legendary halfling citizen. Whenever one or more halflings you control attack a player, create a food token. We have Peregrine Took, a three mana legendary halfling citizen. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus an additional food token are created instead. You can also sack three foods to draw a card. We have Samwise the Stouthearted, a two mana white spell with flash. When Samwise the Stouthearted enters the battlefield, choose up to one target permanent card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to your hand and the ring tempts you. This is a really nice kind of combo rescue piece. You can put Frodo Baggins down on turn two. You can hold up Samwise for an attack on the following turn. If Frodo gets answered, you can flash Samwise in, get uh, Frodo back to your hand and kind of continue on the road to Mordor. We also are going to play a new card, Shire Sheriff, a halfling soldier with vigilance. It says when Shire Sheriff enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a token. And when you do, exile target creature and opponent controls until Shire Sheriff <laughs> leaves the battlefield. Now this is going to work really, really well with all of the food tokens that we have going on. One way to enable this is with many partings, our usual turn one play. It costs one green mana and says, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand and shuffle, then create a food token. So on turn one, we're gonna be trying to either answer an opposing creature with Golem's Bite, which gives that target creature minus two, minus two, or we're gonna be searching up a land, creating a food token and biding our time till turn two or three. Now this is a really, really fun deck. It tends to be a little bit slower than most of uh, the opposing decks that you're gonna play in the Alchemy and Historic queue. But that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it. For our second deck, we're gonna look at Ride of the Rohirrim. This is a Boros colored deck that mostly focuses on humans and Rohirrim. So at the top end, we're gonna have cards like Urkenbrand, Lord of Westfold. Now this is a four mana card. It says whenever Urkenbrand or another human enters the battlefield, Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Now we are trying to make as many human creatures as possible. We're gonna play cards on turn one, like Esquire of the King, which can also pump our squad. We also have a little bit of removal in Ranger's Firebrand, which deals two damage to any target and the ring tempts us. We have Rohirrim Lancer, a menace one drop. When Rohirrim Lancer dies, the ring tempts you. 
And on turn two, we have some token generation, Rally at the Hornburg. And this is a red mana spell, one and one red mana, which says create two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens, and humans you control gain haste. On the three drop, we have Eowyn, Lady of Rohan, which at the beginning of combat on our turn gives a target creature our choice of first strike or vigilance until end of turn. We also have Rising of the Day, which is an enchantment that gives all of our uh, creatures haste and our legendary creatures plus one plus zero. And we have Theoden, King of Rohan. Now, whenever Theoden, King of Rohan, or another human enters the battlefield, a target creature is going to gain double strike. So if we have Urkenbrand down, a Theoden down, we start playing out some of our humans, some of our Rohirrim. All of a sudden, the team is going to be pumped. Now, if we get two or three humans down in the same turn, all of a sudden, all of our creatures have haste, and they're looking at a plus one, plus two, plus three buff. This is going to make for some wild swings. As with most things at the uncommon and common level in this particular release, it is going to be a little bit of uh, a little bit slow, but we do have some ample removal to kind of give us chance. It is a very fun thematic deck to play. And moving on to our third one, we have the Mouth of Sauron. Now this is a Grixis color uh, spell slinging type deck that features the Mouth of Sauron, a five mana spell that says when the Mouth of Sauron enters the battlefield, target player mills three cards, then amass orcs X, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in that player's graveyard. So our idea here is to fill our graveyard with as many instants and sorceries as we can. And there is a really good way to capitalize on this. That card is Fiery Inscription, a three mana spell enchantment, which says, when Fiery Inscription enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Fiery Inscription deals two damage to each opponent. This is gonna turn all of our one mana draw spells, all of our one mana removal spells, our three mana amass and create token spells, our Gandalf's Sanction, which deals X damage to a target creature, where X is the number of instant and sorcery spells, all of those spells are going to become extra damage at the face. And just for a little bit of top off too, we have Erebor Flamesmith, a two mana dwarf artificer, which says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Erebor Flamesmith deals one damage to each opponent. So our plan for this deck is on turn one, either draw another card or remove an opposing creature. Turn two, Play down an Airborne Flamesmith or Founding the Third Path. Turn three, Fiery Inscription. Turn four, all the other things. Eventually, we want to build up to Mouth of Sauron to give ourselves a huge orc army. For our fourth deck, we have a deck that a lot of people are playing, which features the Nazgul, the Nine. And this is going to mostly be a mono black deck. It's going to feature, of course, each of the individual arts of the Nazgul, the nine ring wraiths. This creature is a three mana wraith knight in black that has death touch and says when the Nazgul enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. And whenever the ring tempts you, put a one one counter on each wraith you control. Now a deck can have up to nine of these guys. And if you start playing them out in twos and threes and fours, all of them are going to buff each other and you are swinging with a pile of five six six seven death touchers this can be pretty nasty if unanswered and especially if your opponent isn't playing board wipes now we have some early something to do's we have golem's bite which is a minus two minus two we have gorbag of minas morgul which is a legendary orc soldier which turns your goblin or orcs into cards and treasures we have march from the black gate which is an enchantment that creates uh armies you have Mordor Muster, in which you draw cards, lose one life, and amass an army. You have Nasty End, which is a sack draw effect. Claim the Precious, which is a destroy target creature effect. And then at the top end, because I couldn't resist playing this card, we have Foray of Orcs, in which you amass uh, Orcs 2. And when you do, Foray of Orcs deals X damage to a target creature where X is the amassed army's power. And the Mouth of Sauron. So this is a very fun deck. I find that this particular uh, mono black version tends to be a little bit more competitive just because you're very, very keen on getting those Nazgul down. They're usually going to eat most of the opponent's uh, removal spells, and that's going to let you build up your orc army, get to the mouth of Sauron, and take it from there.
So these are the four kind of best options I found at the artisan level, the uncommon and common level. Let's go ahead and take the nine into gameplay and see how a few games go. Okay, turn one against Vizsla. We have our Golem's Bite, we have a Nasty End, we have a Foray, we have a Nazgul. Looks good to me. We'll go ahead and keep. And because we want to be able to play Nazgul on turn three, we're going to go ahead and play Dismal Backwater this turn. That's going to let us uh, use Golem's Bite on turn two if we need to, and hopefully give us a little bit more time to get our board going. Turn one forest from opponent. Bloodfell caves on our front. Go ahead and play that. Gain a life. Pass the turn. Oh, Lothlorien Lookout. And this is going to be the Scry deck. So in blue and green, there are a bunch of new elves in this Lord of the Rings release in which scrying is important. And we'll see more of that uh, come into play, uh, I assume, this game. So we're going to go ahead, play out our Nazgul. We'll hold up, claim the Precious for next turn. It is a sorcery speed. And we'll see what opponent wants to do. So Lothlorien Lookout, which is the spell that they played, is a two-mana Elf Scout in green that says whenever Lothlorien Lookout attacks, scry one. Chance Met Elf. So this is a three-mana spell, Elf Warrior. Whenever you scry, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Chance Met Elves. However, that ability only triggers once per turn. It is a two toughness spell, so we are going to go ahead and golems bite it. And play our uh, swift water cliffs. We'll go ahead and attack in with the Nazgul. And then I think we will nasty end at the end of our turn, just to try to find another creature. Nimrodel Watcher. Whenever you scry, Nimrodel Watcher gets plus one plus zero until end of turn and can't be blocked. That could be an issue for the next turn, especially as they're going to have Lothlorien Lookout available. So Lothlorien Lookout attacks, they scry one. This is going to trigger their Nimrodels, but because they have Summoning Sickness, it won't be relevant for this turn. We'll go ahead, nasty end our Nazgul. Okay, so we now have Array of Orcs, which can give us a two power Orc army and take out an opposing creature. We have a Claim the Precious, we have a Golem's Bite. Let's go ahead and play down a Bloodfell Caves and play Foray of Orcs, taking out one of the Nimrodel Watchers. Next turn, we will plan on claiming the Precious and either taking out their Scry Enabler in the Lothlorien Lookout, or we'll see if they maybe have a slightly higher power card come down on turn five or six. They play Glorfindel Dauntless Rescuer. Now this is going to say, whenever you Scry, choose one and Glorfindel Dauntless Rescuer gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Glorfindel must be blocked, Glorfindel can't be blocked by more than one creature. So that's going to be an issue, and I feel pretty comfortable with taking that one out. So we get a Golem's Bite to boot. So we'll, we will go ahead and claim the Precious. The Ring is going to tempt us and put us to the second uh, chapter of the Ring. It says, whenever your Ring Bearer attacks, draw a card, then discard a card. We'll go ahead, get rid of Glorfindel, if they allow it, they do. Ring will tempt us, we will choose our orc army. We will go ahead and hold up our instant speed golem's bite for next turn. We'll see what we get off of the attack. Another Nazgul. So in this case, we're gonna drop a land and play out our Nazgul instead. Because of the incidental life gain from all our tap lands, we actually are still at 20, despite being uh, attacked a few times. And now we have a very effective 2-3 Death Touch blocker playing defense.
Looks like opponent is going to play Horses of the Bringen, and that returns up to two target creatures to their owner's hands, and they scry one, then being tempted by the ring. So they now have Lothalorian Lookout with a ring, but we have a lot of Nazgul. We'll go ahead, we'll play out our Nazgul, we'll get our ring going, and we'll see what opponent wants to do next. Now the obvious best possible outcome is that we're going to be able to at some point play all nine of our Nazgul. But if opponent keeps drawing into these horses of the Brinan and returning all of our creatures, it's going to be slow going. So this time we are going to play one Nazgul and then we are going to claim the precious. I'm getting a little tired of their scrying, so we'll go ahead, take out their legendary creature, get tempted by the ring, and pass the turn. They play out a Celeborn the Wise. Now Celeborn the Wise says that whenever you attack with one or more elves, you get to scry. And whenever you scry, Celeborn gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each card that you looked at while scrying. Obviously a very, very effective card. I think opponent probably should have used their Elven Farsight next turn when Celeborn could have gotten that plus three, plus three, but maybe they're looking for a little bit more gas to get them over the finish line. So this could be backbreaking for opponent. We have yet another Claim the Precious. We have a Golem's Bite. I think we're going to have to let them feel some pain. We'll play out our other Nazgul. So I'm not too concerned about dying next turn. And we have a Death Toucher on the back foot. So we have now reached level 4. Level 4 of the ring, which says that whenever your ring bearer deals combat damage to a player, each opponent loses 3 life. So we have two Death Touchers attacking in every turn, and if they're not blocked, they're going to make contact, and opponent will lose 3 more life. So it looks like they're just phoning it in, they're attacking for the sake of attacking, and there we go, the Nazgul bring it home. Okay. So we are on the play. We have a Claim the Precious for some good turn one removal. We have two of our Nazgul, and we have our Mouth of Sauron. Now Mouth of Sauron is something we normally want to draw into a little later, but as we have a little bit of removal, some Nazgul, why not just take the hand? We'll play a turn one Bloodfell Caves, gain our one life, and pass the turn. We'll play out our first Nazgul. It looks like opponent will probably have either a Sacrifice effect to draw off Chambling Ghast or a Murder effect. Don't expect the Nazgul to stick around for very long. We will get our very first chapter of the ring. Seems like everybody's playing Cut Down. Every game somebody has it in their hand. So our plan here is to keep playing out threats until... Ooh, it's not bad. So we will actually save our Nazgul, we'll draw a card, lose one life, and amass one orc, with the hope that opponent uses whatever removal they might have on that orc instead of our Nazgul or the Mouth of Sauron. So we now do have one, <laughs> one instant or sorcery in our graveyard. We will go ahead and 
sack or uh, trade for the Shambling Ghast. That way they can't use the minus one, minus one on us. They will get a treasure token, which might force them to play the Shieldred. No, Tainted Adversary. Interesting. So they can't pay the extra cost. Looks like maybe they're just on a zombie build. That could be kind of fun. Yeah. Okay, so we have... A Nazgul into a Mordor Muster. We're going to go ahead and Mordor Muster first, draw a card, see what we get. After which we will play our Nazgul. We'll get up to the second level of our The Ring chapter, which says whenever your Ring Bear attacks, draw a card, then discard a card. We'll choose our Orc because the Nazgul is a bigger target. And if you remember, the first chapter of the ring also says your ring bearer is legendary and can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. That means our little 1-1 orc can start getting in under the Tainted Adversary. Yep, yet another go for the throat, another removal spell on our second Nazgul. That's two of the nine down. Opponent not holding back. So we now have March from the Black Gate, which allows us to amass some orcs. We have a Claim the Precious. I think what we'll do is we will attack first. We'll see what we get off the draw. And if they kill our orc, and disallow us that draw, then we can play March from the Black Gate and get another Orc army. Ooh, we get yet another Nazgul. So in this case, I think we're going to have to ditch our Mouth of Sauron. I think Nazgul is gonna be a better option at this point. Let's go ahead and drop that. And this way we can play a Nazgul into a Claim the Precious. This will get us to our fourth Ring Temptation. And now our little 1-1 one -one will be doing effectively four damage every time it connects. So our Nazgul is now a 3-4, no longer within cutdown distance. However, our little 1-1 one -one orc is perfectly within cutdown distance. Looks like opponent played out an early meat hook massacre. They couldn't deal with an Nazgul, and they're certainly not going to be happy about us making more orcs. We'll have Nazgul come down. We'll make our original Nazgul the ring bearer. This will buff him up. We'll get in for five. Draw a discard. We'll go ahead and keep our mouth this time. Connect for five, and then also do three damage on top. We have one, two, three, four instants and sorceries in our graveyard currently. Oak Despair. Oh, that's just gross. So our Nazgul isn't going to be as big a threat here. We will have to sack our enchantment. But I think once we play Mouth of Sauron, which will amass four, we'll get in for five, ten, plus the three off a ring bear. That's going to be GG's against a mono black zombie despair deck. So this just goes to show you the power of Nazgul. Good game opponent. Okay, on the draw against Medellin. 
we have our swamp, we have our other two colors, we have a nasty end, a march, we have a Nazgul. I think this is perfectly fine. So turn one's going to be Swift Water Cliffs, so that we can play Swamp on turn two for our March of the Black Gate, from the Black Gate. Gain some incidental life. Grew into our second Nazgul. Just need one more land now. Golem's Bite. Looks like opponent is also playing some of the new cards. Oof. Well, unfortunately, we don't uh, draw another land, so we'll have to hang tight for now. Hey, at least we got an orc. So we'll play Gorbag of Minas Morgul, who will immediately die to whatever opponent is holding. But Gorbag says that whenever a goblin or orc you control deals damage to a player, you may sacrifice, and when you do, either draw a card or create a treasure token. So we'll go ahead and Mordor muster. We'll get a sorcery in the bin. We drew into another land. Very good. We now have our third land for our Nazgul. And if we draw into another one, we can play Foray of Orcs, maybe take out an opposing creature. Looks like opponent is also stuck on two lands. This is excellent news for us. We will go ahead and play our Nazgul, get our Ring Temptation chapters ticking. Looks like maybe they're holding up a counter spell. Make disappear. Very good. So no Nazgul for us. That is not Nazgul, opponent. Fifth land. Pretty much right on cue. We will go ahead and play out our other Nazgul. See if we can get that to stick. It does. Will it be removed? Probably so. Over the throat. Yep. The ring is now officially tempted us. Reckoner Bankbuster. Well, that is gross, isn't it? So at this point, we have only one sorcery in the graveyard. I'm going to go ahead and play Mouth of Sauron anyways, because I think it's a great creature, and I want to see it on the board. We'll go ahead and mill ourselves. If we can get another instant or sorcery in the deck, we do not. We, we mill two lands and another mouth. But every time our orc army attacks, it's going to get a buff from March from the Black Gate. So we will go ahead and attack in. They do go after the Mouth of Sauron, which means we can instant speed, sacrifice it, and draw three cards because it was legendary. Very, very nice spell. It'll fizzle there, go for the throat. We'll get in for two damage. We will play out a Nazgul while keeping up Golem's Bite. Ooh, cut down on the Nazgul. So short lived. But they're wraiths, they can't really die. I'm surprised there isn't some sort of recursion uh, with the Nazgul. But maybe there would be an interesting way to bring them all back with Agadims or another Liliana's something or other. Okay, we have quite a few options here. I think Mordor Muster is going to be their starting point. We'll draw a card, see what we get buff up our orc army. Golem's Bite, Claim the Precious. We know we'll be drawing off of our ring bearer, so we'll go ahead and do that as well. We'll make him a little bigger. Draw and discard. Beautiful. Go ahead, play out our next Nazgul. It's the board. We'll keep the ring bearer the same. We'll pass our turn. Opponent draws with their last bank buster. This gives them a 1 1 creature, which is a perfect target for Golem's Bite. Play out another island. Sauron's Ransom. 
So this card says, choose an opponent, they look at the top four cards of your library and separate them into a face-down pile and a face-up pile. Then, put one pile into your hand and the other into the graveyard. The ring tempts you. So we'll go ahead and take out their token before they get to see any more cards. They don't do anything about that. Ooh, so they have their own Nazgul. So we will go ahead and give them a land and an invoke. Actually, we'll give them an invoke and a march. Or will we? So what is the bigger threat to us? We want to keep attacking down. We want them to use up their entire turn. We'll take the Nazgul and give them a little bit of card draw. We'll see what they want to take. Ooh, they forego their Invoke Despair and land, instead taking a Nazgul and their own March from the Black Gate. Opponent passes the turn. We will go ahead and... Can we get there this turn? So if we give it plus two... Nope. We'll go ahead and attack and... Ooh. Well, if we... Exile Golem's Bite, that's actually going to get us to the fourth chapter of the Ring Bearer. What's one there? Very good. We'll attack in for seven, which will become eight. We will discard our Swamp. We'll do three extra damage off the Ring. Now I think we are in a pretty good position. We'll see what opponent wants to do next. Opponent doesn't know that we're holding on to four removal spells, but they will very shortly. They play out the very own Nazgul. Very cool. They have two mana left. They could crew a bank buster. They could do something else interesting. Let's go ahead, claim the precious on the Nazgul, see what they want to do about that. They may crew with the Bank Buster, it looks like. Although they have to tap both of their creatures down for that. They do. We get to destroy their Nazgul. We will choose the... Oh, that's not going to matter. We'll keep the ring where it is. We will claim the Precious again on the Bank Buster. And we will take the game. GG's Medellin. So as you can see, you don't need the very best cards from the Lord of the Rings set to have some fun. All you need is nine Nazgul. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you've had a good time, and I will catch you in the next one.